Shalom, we the real Hebrew Israelites coming to you week in, week out, prophesying the truth and the return of the Heavenly Father to set up his everlasting kingdom for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. In the confusion of faith scattered wherever you may be. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory honor to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Racha Kodash, which is the Heavenly Father name and the Son name, who the world ignorantly and willingly called Jehovah and Jesus. And Baha Racha Kodash is in the Holy Spirit. The way we're able to understand these prophecies and parables of the scriptures, and the way we're able to live in the truth, sincerity, and charity, and worship the Father in truth and spirit, as the scriptures say, do. Shock double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone, the holy prophets and apostles, back to them, the reincarnation, pushing his word out, truth, sincerity, and charity. Shalom to all your brothers, likewise, pushing the proper doctrine, wherever you may be, and the name. I just want to go into the lesson real quick about charity, you know, because I've uh, been in it and, you know, this is for a video for brothers coming in the truth. Uh, brothers that's already been in the truth as a little reminder, you know, this truth, being in the truth, you'll learn, you know, there's different uh, uh, levels as you grow in the truth. And uh, really everything is a test, man. How you deal with brothers, your thoughts, the sacrifices you make. You know, everything is a test. You either pass or fail. And charity is required to win, man. Charity is overall. Church is saying, if I have charity, I have nothing, man. Find that real quick. If I have not charity, I mean, so like. It's 1 Corinthians 13 and 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove a mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. So if you ain't got charity, man, hey, y'all watching out shy says you're nothing, man. So you can be a brother that do his videos and hide and been in the truth for a long time, man. Just coming in on fire. You can have all the precepts and all that, man. Hey, if you if you ain't got that charity, you ain't nothing. You ain't just could just say, man. You you're nothing. Uh Let's just to say, greatest is charity. This First Corinthians thirteen to thirteen. It says, "And now abide faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. So the thing that's greater than faith and hope is charity, man." And the scripture says, "If you got faith, that you can move mountains. If you if you ain't got charity, you ain't got nothing, man." If you go into that word charity, it's brotherly love, affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, love, feast. And that's one thing we must always understand and remember because having charity, uh, it ensures you, you the victory, man. Which the victory is already conquered through you have a shot. But if you're just showing charity, man, and that humbleness and meekness and fear, you repent and convert and constantly examine yourself, man. Because we in this flesh, the thoughts come, the mistakes come. Okay, the pride kick in, man. Okay, that hatred and that envy, yeah, that, that, that comes with the flesh, man. But you got to rebuke it, man, because we not in the world. We not niggas, man. We different. Okay, we putting on a new man. You know, I'm bending this truth to teach you that, man. I'm getting back to that God more, that God status, man. And it's just being a righteous, holy man, serving the Lord, man. You got to do the whole deal. And you learn that at different levels come into the truth. Learn that as... You know, learning that coming into the truth that is different levels is more than just repenting and calling the name and knowing, doing your videos, going out of highways and byways, making sacrifice. You got to have that charity, man. You know, this is Matthew 22, verse uh, 36. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yahweh shall say unto them, unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And all these two commandments. And so like you're on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay. And the law is still in effect, man. Okay. We keep what we can. And what we can keep a hey, Lord willing. We are uh, the man that you have a shot uh, came and died for, man. And when I say came and died for, I mean on the first go around, the elect. Okay, but that's the reason why he came and did what he did, man, because it was written and he had to fulfill what was written. 
Okay. But nevertheless, man, that was a mighty and great sacrifice he did for us. And in return, what we do, man, we believe, we have charity, we love our neighbor as ourself, man, okay, which, which ensures that we get the victory, man, you know, this first John 5, uh, started too, but this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God. And keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So it's not grievous, man. To show brotherly love. It's not grievous to preach the true doctrine, man. It's not It's not grievous to examine yourself and rebuke your flesh. When you you know it's going off and it's getting prideful. And you you feel some type of way towards a brother for whatever reason, man. Because at the end of the day, them are demons and thoughts. Trying to pull you away. And if you fest on the thoughts and demons, man, hey, that's ultimately used enticed by your lust, man. That's how you really uh, felt, man, you know. But that's the whole point of this lesson, man. Because once you're aware of it, you understand how to battle. Okay, you understand how to cut it with scriptures. You understand that, hey, it's either up or down from here, man. It's either win or lose. It's John, James 5 and 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, that she be condemned. So you don't you shouldn't grudge your against your brother, man. You want to have a grudge, you mean like grief or murmur, man. They murmured against our Lord. Okay, you shouldn't murmur and grief and be vexed at a brother, man, for whatever reason. If you is, you should repent. Okay, you should examine yourself. Especially if your brother ain't did nothing to you. Hey, take King David and Saul, for example, man. Hey, Saul uh wanted to kill King David, man. For what? King David did nothing, man. He served him. Okay, he 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 was uh in order, obedient. Well, also because he's plagued with a a demon, man. He's plagued with an evil spirit, and the Lord won't dealing with him no more. But nevertheless, man, how much more is the Lord dealing with you? You know, just taking that whole example into account, man. King David and Saul, perfect example. How you should be, regardless, man. You know. Uh, it says, "Behold, the judge standing before the door." And a Yahweh Shemal Shai will judge accordingly, man. This Luke six and twenty seven. It says, "But I say unto you, which here love your enemies, do good to them that hate you." And it's talking about within the truth. This ain't talking about the other heathen nations, man. I ain't talking about two thirds because we know two thirds is fit for destruction, and the two thirds will show themselves to be two thirds when they reject this truth, when they when they scoff and don't repent, and when they do wickedly, man. And blast me, Holy Spirit, you know that's a two third man. How he walk, how he act, you know. It said, "Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that wish to despitefully use you," as you gonna have that happen in the truth, man. You're going to be brothers that despitefully use you, man. Okay? But you must pray for them. you going to have brothers, you know, that's going to wish harm on you, man. Hey, you got to bless them, man. And even on another level, you got to understand that we still require to teach the truth, man. Which is a blessing within itself. Scriptures say walk with wisdom to do to them within and without, man. It says, Unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. You must suffer wrongfully, man. Scriptures say being uh reviled, being defrauded, man. Being reproached, hey, we 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 suffer, man, with joy, man, because you have a shot went through the same thing. He was betrayed by one of the twelve, man. How much more in this time in this day and age, man? But nevertheless, we gotta always keep that mindset. King David and Saul as an example, man. Because you don't want to let no man take that crown. You don't want to blow your chances. And all you had to do was just simply remain and keep that integrity, that hospitality, being held accountable, man. Preferring one another.
you know, not giving off the, the bad, wrong example, man. Not showing respect of persons, man. You you reverence this brother and treat this brother some type of way, but when they come to this brother, you look you look at them sideways, man. Okay, you 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 don't hold that same uh, fear and reverence as you would another brother. Hey, how about Shem Al Shai? This the words of the Lord, man. Hey, the Lord is not with that, man. He will judge you for that, and that's the message, man. It says, "Give to every man the acts of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again." Why? Because vengeance belongs to Yahweh Shem Al Shai. He will deal with that brother, man. That brother going off of misusing you, man, or being a hypocrite or lying. The Lord is going to bring everything to light, man. And we just hope to be the men and show and be the living and walking testimony what Yahweh Shai did for us and what he did within us, man, because he working within us. And it says, as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what think have ye? It's a question. For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what think ye have? For sinners also do even the same. And that's the difference, man. We, we're separate from the world. We're separate from these sinners, man. Okay? And our Lord and Savior, is he's showing us that, man. And it says, ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive. What think ye have? For sin is also lent to sin is to receive as much as gain. But love ye your enemies and do good and land, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the thank unthankful and the evil. Okay, because the Lord is going to repay you back for your good deeds, man. The Lord is going to reward you according to your integrity and hospitality, man, and your leadership, man. And you holding yourself accountable, man. You, you, you taking the initiative to be brotherly regardless, man. You know when a brother getting weak, help the brother, man. Don't sit there and watch your brother fall. Okay, you, you know when your brother being some type of way, show him the way how to be. He being wrong, show him how to be right, man. Don't be wrong back with him. Scripture say, uh, uh, evil for evil, man. That's going off, man. Roughly paraphrasing. Forgot what it said, but, uh, they not rendering evil for evil, man. That can get you the boot, man. And when I say the boot, you, you, your crown can be taken away. All because of something simple as that, man. You want to go back and forth. You want to buck up. And you learn that, man. Because, hey, I've been in the same position, man. Trying to justify myself. Lying. Okay. Feeling some type of way towards a brother. But you rebuke this flesh and these thoughts, man. Because your, your, your salvation is on the line, man. Okay, and we not in the world, man. These are true men of the Lord. You don't know who is who. Even outside this truth, you don't know who is who, man. When you try to walk with wisdom and you know some type of uh, respect and integrity with, with people outside of the world, man. Because you don't know who them people might be. Okay, you don't want to offend them, especially, you know, they know the Lord's elect. And that's just wisdom, man. You got to walk with wisdom. This first Peter 3 and 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but counterwise, uh, contra contrarywise, blessings, knowing that ye are then to call that ye should inherit a blessing. So if you do these things, you're going to inherit a blessing, man. But if you render evil for evil, you how about your mouth shot will judge you, man. Okay. You how about your mouth shot will judge you. It says, be ye therefore merciful as your father is also merciful, man. Okay? We have to have that mercy, that love, that charity, which is above all, man. Which is above your faith that you claim to have in your house by Shai. Just yes, Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. When you look up that word dissimulation, man, basically mean like unfeigned, undisguised, sincere. So you got to have that sincere love with all the brothers, man, over you and under you, man. You got to walk with wisdom, man. So then within the truth and without. You got to show people, hey, I'm a walking testimony. How about Shem Al Shai? I'm a new man. And I'm a hey, all praise and glory to How about Shem Al Shai, but also respect and reverence to his men that he uh, sent and put in your life. 
Because brothers help you, brothers put their line, put their life on the line, brothers make sacrifices, knowing they don't want to do it. Brothers get you out of gyms, financially, physically. Brothers exhort you and motivate you. Okay, and we ought to continue to uh, forward that blessing, man, and, and help and do that likewise, as we have been taught, man. Not murmuring and grudging, man, having thoughts towards brothers or judging a brother. Oh, this, this, this brother, that, this brother. No, man, help that brother, man. Not judging, because you ain't in that gym, because they like, hey, it was well put, man. If you put in that same gym, man, and you couldn't bear it, you'll off yourself. You'll, you, you'll lead the truth, man. For the same reason that you see that brother struggling. Hebrews say comfort the weak and the feeble, man. We are commanded to do that. I'm going to grab that. It say comfort the weak. See your brother going through it, man. Now we exhort you, brother, and warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. You got to have that patience. Okay? You got to have patience, man. You got to comfort. Say less that which is lame be turned. Hebrews 12 and 13. And make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So you got to heal your brothers, man, that's weak. Okay? That's under you. That's going through it. And that's what we help. That's what we help for each other. That's why we help each other, man. It say, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. And that's what we learn in this truth, man, on all aspects, because charity cover it all. Charity cover a multitude of sins. And that's not talking about money, man. That's talking about how you treat a brother, how you uh, talk to a brother, man, and what you the thoughts you think about a brother, man. It says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. You look at that word preferring means to go before and show the way. So you're going to show that brother the way, how to walk, how to be, man, when his flesh acting up. Because if you know, understand your flesh act up and you know, understand this flesh is wicked and no good thing dwell in and you know this flesh going to be changed, you should have that same understanding and know that that brother is in the flesh, man. And you should show and use wisdom. And hopefully he get it. Hopefully he pick up. And if he don't, your how about Shemal Shah is going to deal and judge that brother accordingly, man. But you should be patient and uh, vengeance belong to the Lord, not taking it to your own hands. I'm going to treat this brother different. I'm going to shine him. You know, having that schisms within the body, man. Having that respect of persons. And murmuring. Hey, the Lord going to judge you for that, man. This Psalms 133 verse 1. A song of the degree of David. Behold how... Good and pleasant is it for brothers to dwell in unity, man. Being one on one, one accord and on, with the uh, Holy Spirit, that Baha Rakhakwadash. Because we're not in the world, man. We don't do things out of the world. It's 1 Corinthians 12 and 25 that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, man. And that schisms means separation, man. Division. Ain't no division, man. This ain't the time of kings, man, where the northern and southern kingdom was split up, man. This ain't the world, man, where we just do our brothers bogus, man. We get down. Treat them any kind of way, man. Well, this is we, this is not East Our Kingdom, man, where we those which are weak are found to be nothing. No, man. Because the same brother you treat, you don't know who that brother is through the spirit, man. You know? This first John 3 and 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, who slew his brothers, and wherefore slew he him. So what his brother do to Cain? What did Abel do to Cain to deserve what Cain did to him? Nothing. Because his own works was evil and his brothers were righteous? That's because Cain went off his lust, man. He was a fleshly, carnal uh, niggard, man. And Cain is back in a reincarnation through the descendants of Esau Edom, man. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So I'm going to jump down. Whosoever hate his brother is a murderer. And you know that though murderer have eternal life are bad to him. And you know, and this is going to the fact that hey, the wisdom of the Lord is double to that which it is, man. But dealing with the uh, basic layers, man. 
Hey, again, you should love your brother, man. Because if you love him, you're going to treat him right. You're going to give him the right truth. You're going to give him the right doctrine. You're going to give him that bless, not that curse. Okay? And that's how you save souls. But if you don't do that, you do contrary to that. You render evil for evil. You let your brother fall out. You see that he getting weak and you let him fall out. And you just murder him, man. Spiritually. Hereby perceive we love the to hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Okay, and certain uh certain brothers uh really shows and bring the scripture to life. We must also likewise, man, doing certain sacrifices, doing these videos, which is charity, man. Okay. You know, and this this chapter just goes into, you know, love, man. But a couple other verses down. This first John 4, 7. Be love. Let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And yeah, he make it rain on the just and the unjust, man. He laid his life down for all Israel, ultimately. But on the elect, going to accept it because they love and return, man. The scripture say he loved us first, man. But the man said of two thirds, they don't consider. They say, where has thou loved us? They think this is a hey, scripture say this chastisement, this slavery we in, this condition we in, it's not for our punishment, for our better. We messed up. We getting punished less than our iniquities deserve. You know? And hey, Yahweh Shah really loved us because he laid his life down, man. That's the ultimate true love. And we must be, Scripture say, put, let this man be in you, which was once in Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah wasn't know none of that, man. He could have just dealt with a whole other nation, man. He could have made nations out of rocks. He could have said to hell with them. I ain't finna do that. Hey, uh, let your will be done, Father. And it would have been that, man. But the will of the Father is love, man. John 3 and 6, John 3 and 16, man, for, for God so loved the world, man, that he gave his only begotten son. This says, and this was manifest the love of God to us because the God sent his only begotten son to the world that we might live through him. And that's the point, man. We can live it through Yahweh Shah, man, not this lust, not this flesh, not this hatred, man. This is John 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you that ye love one another as I have loved you, say if, as I have loved you, that ye love also one, that ye also love one another. But this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. And that's how they know we the disciples, man. We love one another, man. Let that love flourish. You know? And that's just a, a refreshed commandment, man, because they through time and ages, man, a lot of people forget about that. Okay. And then they only show it to them that love them, man. Nah. We gotta do it. King David and Saul, and there's an example, man. That's a perfect example. How King David kept his integrity, man. Throughout all the things Saul was throwing at him. <laughs> Literally. And mentally fit, man. Got to keep that integrity so we can get the kingdom, man. We can be the house of uh, David, Lord willing, man. Malak, David, Malak Dawad, man. But, Lord will hope the lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, glory, honor to you. How about Hashem, how was shot? Double honor, so I owe an apostle, great millstone, which taught us this truth, proper understanding. Shout out to you, Aki, my brother, that showed the way and teach the proper name and doctrine and how to walk in this truth. Shout out to